Hello everybody and welcome to the seventh episode of the AM Film Podcast. We, we've been gone for two weeks, but yeah, things happen, so hopefully it'll be weekly again. We've now had the same amount of episodes as Star Wars films, but basically the quality of all our other podcasts have been like the prequels, and now we're going to finally get into the good ones. <laughs> Don't scare them away. <laughs> so basically, you can be the J.J. Abrams from now on, if you wanted to, it's up to you. Who, me, personally? Yeah, if, if you want to be. I wish I was a god. I'm just a mere mortal. Anyway, so the future master of film, Bradley Evans. Uh, the future master of film, Callum Moran. I li- literally, like, our new podcast should be called The Masters of Film, because that would be true. This this whole intro is just a massive ego trip. I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm I'm Brad Evans. Um, I haven't been on the show for, for a few episodes now. I have been away and busy, um, but now I'm back. Um I know you all missed me from the zero comments that you you know we've received. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, how how are we doing, Callum? Are we good? I'm good, thanks. So I've been keeping your fan mail actually to get back to you. So that's why it's it's not receiving. Not <laughs> so receiving. Any- good English. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so basically to sum this up, we've basically moved around the podcast a bit and new topics. So did you want to introduce the new topic? Yeah, yeah, I can do. It's um, it's called Trailer Park. That's a brilliant uh, name, Bradley. <laughs> Callum's very proud of his creation there, where essentially we break down um, a few of the trailers that were released uh, since the last podcast, uh, and we have a bit of a chat about them. The issue we have uh, this week is that not only have we had two weeks out, but also there's been about 20,000 trailers released. Um, but we're going to talk through some of the uh, some of the most popular ones uh, and uh, let you know what we think. So starting off with Captain America, Callum, what were your first impressions? Start with a lovely little indie film, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Or we start with the little ones. Um, I really loved the trailer. It was it was basically Marvel reassuring what we thought we had with this kind of film. It, it seems to have the same kind of message about Unverse Superman, but I seem way more invested in it because I already know the universe. So I'm excited for this film. It was no big like surprises. It's got everyone in it. it basically, looks like Avengers, but Captain America. Which again, I'm not too sure about. It should have been an Avengers film because it because blatantly it's gonna have a bias towards Captain America. I don't think Iron Man would have had a shot if it wasn't that. But um, yeah, like like the action looks amazing. I mean, a few boss fights. The only thing that kind of worries me, but it's also quite good. I don't really know who they're fighting against because surely there's going to be a common villain at the end. So I'm kind of interested to see who that is because that hasn't been spoiled. Like Batman vs Superman, because now we know that's Doomsday. And everyone knows that. I mean, the trailer's been out now. So I'm kind of hoping that, that they've got a Doomsday equivalent that they're currently <laughs> hiding from us still. But that's what I'm hoping for, and it's the final trailer, so everything we know now, we already know. Um, and also Spider-Man. I mean, Spider-Man's a huge talking point, but we'll get on to that after we hear your generic thoughts. Well, not generic thoughts, general thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I meant general. I appreciate that. Such confidence. <laughs> I meant um, I'm, I'm not actually going to say a, a typical response, because a lot of people seem to be losing their shit over to this trailer. And to me, I, I didn't see anything special in it. Um, until uh, Spider-Man uh, turned up, uh, and it was great to see Spider-Man in the mix. Uh, I think oh, it, it was, it's nice to see um, Ant-Man in there. There's one shot uh, when Ant-Man is small, and I was like, "What's going on here? I don't understand." Then <laughs> I realised, obviously, he's got shrinking abilities. And I was like, "Oh, it's Ant-Man. <laughs> okay, thank God for that." Um, uh, but no, it's, it's nice to see. To be honest, it's, it's just nice to see the um, the new additions. Um, I I just. You know, it just, it just feels like it's a little bit... It's more flat. the same for Marvel, which is a or, good and bad thing. Yeah, but it, it, just, it just feels like it's it's a little bit flat. It doesn't feel like there are any stakes, to be honest. Um, if War Machine dies, then I'll be pissed <laughs> off because they gave that away in every single trailer. Um, I, I just don't feel like anyone's going to... Like I don't really feel like there are stakes there. Well, the thing is, is that if War Machine does die, and we've seen it in the trailer, surely that means that there's another character above his level that must die to be the shock factor. I mean, I, yeah, I mean that's yeah, what but I can who, think about. Who would be, who would be the one? I mean, Robert Downey Jr. has been quite quiet on how many contracts he signed, but then again, Chris Evans has done the opposite and made a big point about him filming um, Infinity War, but maybe. Chris Evans is like calling up bluff, but I, I think one of them has to bite the dust for this film to have consequences. Absolutely. But I mean, as far as the studio is concerned, are they happy to do that just before, you know, Infinity War? Because let's face it, the critical and the fan reaction to 
um, to uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, that was, you know, completely subpar compared to the first one. Uh, I mean, obviously financially it made a absolute shit ton of money. Um, but they, they're going to want their, their big hitters going into it. And I, I don't mean, think, given a few of the other um, characters, one standalone film before heading into it is going to be enough. I mean, like, there's it, literally only two people that it really could be that, that dies realistically. Captain America or um, Iron Man. Because, I mean, like, Thor's got another film. Spider-Man would be hilarious if I killed him off. But I <laughs> doubt that's going to happen. I mean, like, all, all the other characters are kind of, like, not really going to matter if they die. I mean, like, they're, they're all on that lower tier. I mean, Ant-Man's right. going to be fine. It's just, like, I, I, I really hope that they kill one of them off. And I, I'm, I'm not sure who it is. If they do kill off Iron Man or Captain America, do you think they'll bring uh, the actors back? Or do you reckon they'll just replace them? What do you mean? For all well, th- like, for example, if Captain America dies, like, by the way, he doesn't in the fucking comic books, which so <laughs> many people are saying, oh, in, in the Civil War um, comic, he dies. Well, I bought that, okay? I read it, and he does not. <laughs> he, he does not. It's in a. It's on a separate. Uh, it's a separate one. So that being said, I know that the the, the comic where he dies is is kind of a continuation of the comic, uh, the the, uh, the Civil War storyline. But it's not actually in that. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That particular series yeah. um, of events. So therefore, I don't think it's actually as set that Captain America will die. But if he does, like you can see someone like Bucky Barnes taken see, Steve I, Rogers' place. I, I don't think Bucky could. I mean, like I'm really uninvested in Bucky. I mean, I never really had that connection in the previous films, like The Winter Soldier and the film before that. I just never really felt like he's a... He, I mean, he always seems to be there, but I'm never invested in that character. I mean, are you invested in him? Or <sighs> the, the issue I have is that I, I kind of hope he doesn't turn into a good guy because he is a pretty cool badass. But like all pretty cool badasses, uh, you know, they, they're kind of disposable at the end of the day. Uh, you don't want to kind of transform everything he is just to make him the new Captain America. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the, the thing is, it's got us talking. You know, yeah. and that, that, that's all trailers are intended to do is get people talking. I mean, and this trailer gave nothing away, like I said before. So kudos to them. Or well, I, I, I really hope there's much more beneath the surface than yeah. what's in that trailer. Because if, if that is it, it's going to be a disappointing film. So I'm kind of hoping that they've been reserved and keeping stuff from us. I hope so. I hope that they're, uh, they're, they're hiding um, quite a bit. So the second trailer we're going to talk about is... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sausage Party. Uh, so the trailer dropped for Seth Rogen's... <clears throat> crack at animation <laughs> and I saw this when I first woke up this morning and I've probably seen it two or three times since because I just find this trailer absolutely hysterical um, it's complete you know nonsense <laughs> it's really over the top the The language the red band trailer is absolutely hysterical um, but it's, it's such a, a Seth Rogen film that it hit every every point you know, I mean, the animation is good. I think we need to kind of just talk about that briefly because obviously it is a comedy at the end of the day, but the animation is incredible But what we saw. Um, but the humour hits um, and it feels like we've only been introduced to a few segments of the film. Like, we still don't know really what it's about. <laughs> Which, oh. <laughs> it's probably about nothing. Um, but the fact that we're looking forward, well, at least I'm looking forward to a film about talking sausages and baby carrots <laughs> <laughs> only Seth Rogen can do that but yeah I, I mean I'm absolutely looking forward to this it looks hilarious and it, and it also looks like one of those films that like under 15 year olds are going to want to go and see kind of like Deadpool because it's got it's got that mix behind I mean it looks great I, I mean that whole world looks amazing the only thing I'm worried about is what happens after they go to the kitchen and how long like that will be after, and the events have unfold after, but I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, like, we basically right. saw the first, like, third of the film, I'd say, from that trailer, for the whole setup for the rest of it. Yeah. It yeah, looks absolutely. great. I mean, I mean, like, the literally so many, like, audio stars are doing, like, voices for it. It looks brilliant. Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, and this is the kind of film that I want to be successful, 
and, and for there to be a Netflix series after that. I mean, I mean, like imagine a Netflix series like exploring the whole world of these talking food items. It, I mean, there's so much to explore around it. It sets up a great world that I really want to explore. I um I, that kind of reminds me of a, a show that we used to have over here called Creature Comfort. So oh, exactly, ever, yeah, yeah. That was that was like hysterical <laughs> just because there's so much you can do, like in like these little uh, segments. That you're right. I think there's potential to to just kind of spin this off. Uh, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. And considering it's a film that I I thought they were joking about when they said they're doing an animation film called Sausage Party. <laughs> you can imagine what's going on inside my head about what that film's going to be about. Um, but no, I'm I'm really happy with the trailer. And, I mean, and the and bonus thing is, is that the film debuted at South by Southwest two days ago, I think. And there's been right. one review got for it so far, and it's been extremely yeah. positive. Literally, like it's praised as everyone wants it to be. So, basically, reading that review, it, it says it's dirty. It says it's really funny. Hits in every beat. Like every joke's like a clever one thought out through. So, I mean, there and is I think, promise. I think that's kind of it's good to see um, Seth Rogen kind of push himself. Um, but also have limitations um, because Seth Rogen has always been Seth Rogen, but obviously with an animation, you, you, you kind of got endless possibilities. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what, what they do with that. Uh, going from a comedy um, that you know, absolutely <laughs> hit with the trainer to a comedy that didn't for me personally, and that's <gasps> pop star. I know, I know. I feel like we're going to have some tension now. Uh, so you're a massive fan of Lonely Island, right? Yeah, the Lonely Islands are amazing. I mean, Andy Sandberg's one of my favourite comedians around the moment. I mean, Brooklyn Nine-Nine's absolutely hilarious. Cuckoo, the first series of that on BBC Three, was amazing. He's such a creative genius for me. I I agree. Um, I don't like Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Um, oh, oh I, I, li- but, I literally watched an episode before this. I love that programme. But ev- everything else that he and the rest of Lonely Island have done, I I love it. I, th- I think it's absolutely hysterical. I laughed more at the Green Band trailer than the Red Band trailer, which is a little bit worrying. Um, <laughs> so I'd, I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm just not really getting the vibes. It just feels like it's it's almost uh, a Saturday Night Live sketch. I was about to say the feature, exact same thing. It, seem, it seems like a it seems like a series of sketches. Although I, I'm looking forward to the film, but it, it literally does feel like all those sketches put together, kind of like a compilation at the end of a series of Saturday Night Live. I mean that's that's true, but I also thought the same about movie forty three. So, I mean, I'm not saying this is going to be <laughs> anywhere near that. But sometimes when you chuck together um, a few punch lines and a few, you know, set pieces here and there, it doesn't always, you know, flesh out well enough to to be a feature length film. But it is only the first trailer. Um, uh, but I, I, I did laugh, for, you know, at a, a few a few of the spots, like with the basketball scene. Uh, when he throws the basketball behind him, and he didn't get it in, but his, you know, his mates cheer. And uh, is it uh, what's her name? Sarah? Is it Silver? Uh, Sarah? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you yeah. know who I'm one about. Yeah, I know uh, who I, about. She's she's uh, hysterical, so I'm looking forward to seeing her in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing what else we see. It, it, may, it may just be a case of the the segments that I saw in this one didn't quite hit for me. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a film that I'm definitely going to see opening week, nonetheless. I mean, like it. it, it... It just looks like there's so many jokes in it, but I, I totally get what you mean. Like again, similar to Sausage Party, this could easily off being a Netflix series, like following each character of his entourage around. It could yeah, have been totally. like that, kind of like Arrested Development esque, like where all the stories come together and you see from different viewpoints. It could yeah. have been like that, but I'm kind of appreciative that this film's being made because like the last two years has been super low on the Lonely Island content because they've been making this film. I think they made it about a year and a half ago, so it's been sat there for a while without any other content. So I'm looking right. forward to it. Um, it's just more Lonely Island, and I think it's going to be full on Lonely Island. But also, one of the benefits about being Lonely Island is that their music is actually like genuinely incredible for all it is. Like it, it is. Yeah. Like like the tracks behind it, kind of like Tenacious D. I mean, it's comedy on front, but there's like solid like tunes underneath it. Absolutely, so I'm, yeah. I'll be looking forward to hearing like that kind of in a cinema because I mean, like like a good sound system with good songs in the cinema can absolutely make a film and give it the icing on the cake. But that that's. But that's if they do it right, which obviously from a personal viewpoint, I'm hoping they do. Um, but only only time will tell. Um, I hope they just don't go over the top with it. Um, but I mean, it's 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 hard to it's hard to see from trailer on. But like I said, I laughed in a few places. I, it didn't hit me as hard as the uh, <laughs> the film about the sausages. 
dear. Austin right, Powers really. worked though. I mean, Austin Powers worked, and, and I mean, if you looked at a trailer for Austin Powers, it, it kind of had the same feel like his Saturday Night Live sketches all throughout, and that worked as a film series. So it's, it I is. think it's got promise, but we'll see. It, oh, it absolutely has promise. Um, don't take what I'm saying personally. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fine. Uh, so the next of uh, another comedy uh, coming up. We've we got a few comedies coming out, haven't we? Yeah. Um, Central Intelligence. Uh, I'll let you start because you you grimaced when I said that. The, the first half of this trailer, I absolutely loved. I mean, Dwayne, Dwayne The Rock Johnson makes his film. It's when Kevin Hart comes into playing his psychic. I'm totally... I've, I've seen that twice with Ride Along 2. Like, it's just... I, I've seen him play so many buddy cops with him all the time that I'm kind of fed up for that. And I would absolutely replace him with anyone else apart from that. I mean, like, the first sequence was hilarious seeing them like that. But, like, the second half is just, like... It's just... it It's generic Kevin Hart. Just like playing around, like like, like screaming, shouting, doing all these things. But I mean, Dwayne the Rock Johnson in, in a comedy, I'm totally sold on that half. It's just the half of Kevin Hart. I'm just, I I don't think I can sit through another ride along. I mean, they're they're adequate films, but it's just it's, it's the same performance every single time with the same gags. And I just so I I so Dwayne Dwayne the Rock Johnson, I buy <laughs> Kevin Hart. I would totally just not have at all. Right. Okay. Film. What do you uh, think? Of? Well, there's there's two interesting things that um that you're saying in there. Uh, the the first one is that you're still saying Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, just, it's not the nineties. Uh, no, I did, but no, I, he. I completely agree. I I think he might even carry this film. Um, I do feel like Kevin Hart's almost you know reining it back a little bit. Uh, I mean, he is playing an accountant, um, and he's meant to be smart. And I'm hoping they play a bit more on that because at the end of the day, um, Dwayne Johnson's really kind of selling it on his Instagram, uh, which everyone should follow, by the way. I mean, the Baywatch pictures recently have been enough reason to follow it. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, but it's, it, he's really been selling it on a, on a film that's special to him because it's about, you know, getting back at the bullies. And it's actually about getting revenge on, you know, someone who ruined your life, but how he made the best of that. I just don't want Kevin Hart, like you said, to come in and start chucking poop jokes and you know but did you but did you not see that in the second half of the trailer i mean like it's all fine until they get to meeting up again and then kevin yeah. hart does his your normal like squealing and stuff i mean i find kevin hart funny i just think this film could be that that bit better without him in there i mean like you place him with anyone else and it'd be fine but also i mean it'd be quite interesting to see who's playing the straight guy in this because like it in ride long it's always been ice cube playing the non-comedy role but with two comedy roles with different personalities, it may clash. And I may just want to see Dwayne Johnson making the jokes and Kevin Hart be the straight guy. But I don't, but I don't see him doing that at all. What gives me hope is the fact that Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, is, is <laughs> very he, much... He should always be called that. <laughs> he's uh, definitely uh, the most electri- electrifying man in all the sports entertainment, right? The people's <laughs> champ. Uh, he um, He's very much at the centre of this trailer. And it's, it does very much feel like his film and i really hope that's the case because you know this is what this is what dwayne the rock johnson lives for <laughs> like this 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 is his stuff i mean he is he has got you know charisma he's he's got you know he, he's a funny guy um so I, I just hope they play on that and don't like kevin hart take over the, and another thing that worries me is that it's done by the director of were the millers and I... the i loved were the millers until the third act uh, I just felt like it kind of got a little bit sloppy. Um, so I, I don't know if that's enough reason to be concerned, but, you know, that's yeah. just me. Uh, another film that's coming out uh, is Now You See Me Too. Once again, I tried to drop for that today. <laughs> uh, now, it's funny because we watched that about 10 minutes before we uh, we started recording. And we started questioning ourselves who was in the first one. What actually <laughs> happened in the first one, uh, and why is Harry Potter in the second? Uh, so, Callum, what were your initial thoughts? Um, first of all, this has got an all-star cast. I mean, like, there's enough talent in this film to, to make me go and want to watch it, and, it, and it's genuine talent as well. It's not just big names. I mean, you have got Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Harrelson, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, and Daniel Radcliffe. So, so like the talents there. So it could it, it could be great. But the thing that worries me is that it gets overcomplicated. I mean, the first one kind of had that problem for me is that it kind of takes two watches to fully appreciate that kind of film. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I mean, you got Morgan Freeman in there. I mean, we'll talk about this with Ben Hur, literally being the like narrator of the film by just coming in and giving a story. I mean, I'm yeah. fine with that. It's Morgan Freeman. If anyone was going to do it, it could be him. Um, Daniel Radcliffe playing the. I think he's going to be a villain kind of guy, I'm guessing, or the arch ne- nemesis of these guys. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to that, mainly because it seems to be the first film with Daniel Radcliffe playing Daniel Radcliffe and kind of embracing what he is. I mean, like he, he kind of had that teenage period after Harry Potter where he was trying to get away from being Daniel Radcliffe again. I mean, like yeah. with Horns, What If, where he was playing a very kind of like boringish character. So it seems to be like the charisma's kind of back for Daniel. So I'm looking forward to that performance. I'm just kind of what, interested to see where it goes. Well, just going off what you said about Daniel Radcliffe, it is very much him because he seems like really socially awkward. Uh, and I don't know if you remember in the first uh, trailer for this film, but when he tries to uh, do the magic trick, or uh, I think he tried to throw a card, it just went completely wrong. Um, and I, I think they're playing up on the fact that he's really bad at like magic. Uh, so you know that magic tricks, which is obviously an in joke in itself. I totally believe um, that though. I, I mean, like if you watch his interviews, he's so honest with people, like messing up and stuff, joking around. So absolutely. I, I, I totally buy into that performance, and I, I really think it's the first performance I'll buy into Daniel Radcliffe since he's done Harry Potter. What I am looking forward to, and what I'm happy with, what they're doing with this film, is that they're pretty much continuing it from the first one, and they're saying it basically has consequences, which is good because they robbed a motherfucking bank and <laughs> it should have consequences. Uh, so I'm happy they're doing that. My issue is that with a few scenes that we see, I can't remember if I felt this way in the first one, sometimes you go past believing that they're just, you know, uh, they're doing magic tricks. And I suppose, uh, you know, some moments in uh, this trailer, looks like they're actually doing magic, which obviously... I don't think was in the realm of what the first film was trying to achieve. But then the first one kind of had that. Like on the first watch, you didn't really get the trick till the big reveal at the end. And then on the second watch, you get way more out of it, which is why I think I enjoyed it on the second watch. Maybe I should watch it again. But um, and see what happens. <laughs> I, I mean, I am also got to say Mark Ruffalo in this film was absolutely brilliant. I mean, the first film, he, I mean, he was one of the strong points that I kind of forgot about. I mean, like him playing the cop and investigating them, you really yeah. believe it. And I mean, it's just like, it's probably one of Mark Ruffalo's best films. And it, and it really gives you that extra dynamic to that film, kind of mm. like the thriller kind of aspect. So you've got the action adventure over there, and then you've got the thriller of the cop trying to chase him down. And that yeah. really like gives you breathing spaces in between the magic to like be grounded again and, and know that these are people on the run that that are real people and aren't just like wizards that's that's what i was going to say um actually hit the nail on the head he definitely made the film feel a bit more grounded um it'd be interesting to see what direction they're going but as a trailer do you think it worked i mean it certainly piqued my interest i mean i, th- I thought okay well I'm, i'll go out and see it it's, it's raised my awareness again i just don't know if i remember it in two three days with all the trailers we're getting at the moment I mean, like, as a trailer, I didn't really love it. I mean, like, you've got, like, Sausage Party at the beginning, which was, like, a mini film in itself. This this was kind of, like, just, like, throwing loads of stuff at you, going, this is packed with the content. So it's, it's just a different kind of trailer. Um, it's, like you said, I, I'm intrigued to see it and what they do with it. It seems a bit like they threw everything at the wall and, and trying to get you to, like, stick to some of it. So... Well, Now You See Me wasn't one of the greatest films of all time. Ben Hur, on the other hand, was. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag Brad Segways. Um, And uh, so they're they're remaking it, or they've remade it. And we had a trailer. We watched the trailer. We did. What do you think? Again, it's a trailer of two halves for me. First half, I didn't really enjoy it. It was a bit, I mean, the whole, like, ship thing at the beginning seemed super CGI. But I, I, I mean, second half when it goes more gladiator, that that's what I'm looking forward to, and I really hope the film doesn't dwell on that first half of him getting to this arena. And I really hope it it it, it kind of like settles down very early on and gets into that brutality of what it looks like it's gonna be. No, I, I felt exactly the same when the first shot opened up with the the sweeping wide shot over the CGI ships and seas. I was thinking, oh, in the heart of sea, they're better. <laughs> why? Well. I've, I've, well <laughs> oh yeah, why bring that up? Um, uh, but um, but yeah, I, I was thinking this is just going to be a CGI fest, and that's not what Ben Hur was. It's you know an epic sword and sandals movie. Um, granted, that about six hours too long. Um, but um, what, what do you? I mean, I, I, I 
like I said, I thought completely the same. I thought the second half was actually a very good trailer. First half didn't sell me at all. Um, but Tom Hiddleston was meant to be in this film, and he pulled out. Could yeah. you imagine? Could you see? Could you see him in that role? No, and I don't. I, again, I'm not really sold on the lead actor. What, like, can you remember his name? I am to be about to tell me if I can't remember. Okay, but um, <laughs> I, I'm not really. I'm not really sold on him in the film. He's there. I'm more like sold on the surroundings of the film and what's around him. I mean, that's why I'm buying into it. Like, right. I mean, I would have absolutely loved to have seen. I know, I know, everyone's saying it, but like, imagine Tom Hardy in that role, being like that brutal and everything. I, I, I kind of hope it was someone a bit more well known because it's right. kind of like risking li- li- leaving on this actor that's got like a solid IMDb, but it's not particularly leading man every single film. So I'm, I'm a bit worried about that. But I mean, it, it I. I think Ben Hur, like he, if even though his name is the size of your bike into the world around him and the journey he goes on, uh, li- literally everything that's around him you're focusing on rather than directly him. It feels like a blend of of two films. Like one is CGI mess, but like you say, it really do, it really does have a gladiator feel. Um, and when when that stuff's kicking off, they it actually had my attention. I was like, oh, okay, this could be like really, you know, gritty, and so I could really feel this. And then. It just cuts to the CGI shot of him tied to the the chariot being pulled along. And I was thinking, this isn't. This doesn't really seem to. It doesn't really seem to know what it is and what it wants to be. What? Um, but it, again, it's raising awareness. Everyone knows that a Ben Hur film is coming out now. Uh, well, time will tell. When is it releasing? Twenty sixteen. August twenty sixteen. So there's time for it to bulk up some of the CGI. I mean, we saw that with Jurassic World, for it to become more realistic, but. We'll see. Uh, now, Ben Hur is a fairly easy name to pronounce. The next <laughs> film is not. I'm so glad I'm not hosting Tim this bit. Tim <laughs> Burton's... <coughs> Tim Burton's Miss Peregrine's Home for the Peculiars. I'm going to get absolutely butchered. I don't think you nailed that. I probably did not. Um, so this is a film that I didn't know was even like in the works. Today, it's just amongst all the other trailers. It seems to have got buried. Um, now... My first impressions for this film is that we started off, and I think you were right when you said it, it kind of felt a bit like Goblet of Fire. Um, <laughs> and then it kind of went to like an enchanted world meets, you know, X Men. Um, and I was like, okay, this is interesting. I just hope it's not like Big Fish, because Big Fish is a film that I I have never liked and probably never will like from Tim Burton. Um, it, it was just something that I thought was a bit of a mess. Uh, I didn't really know what it wanted to be. It knew it wanted to be different, but I didn't know what it was trying to say. Um, what gives me hope for this film is that it's, it's the, the writer is Jane Goldman, uh, and she's a phenomenal writer. Uh, she done um, Kick Ass. Uh, she also done um, oh, what's the one? With... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's that. It's, oh, it's embarrassing. Um, with the floating ship in the sky and Frickin' Gervais. This is voice. I'm really confused. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it sounds like a weird film, but that's good. No, no, mate, it's incredible. Give me two seconds. Like, okay. we'll have to cut this bit out, right? No, no, no we're not going to cut this. It's going to be filler. So this is a little bit of extra <laughs> filler you've got in this podcast. You, right, you, well, you Jane, won't have to pay extra. Jane Goldman is good. She wrote The Kingsman, uh, Kingsman Secret Service, Kick-Ass, oh. X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, and oh, the film that I'm trying to think of. Come on, Stardust. There you go, boom. Thank you, um, Stardust. Uh, so I, I think she's a great writer. I think this is right up her street. Um, and I think what what Tim Burton's been lacking is, you know, no one's really reined him in. I don't think anyone's actually told him that he hasn't made a good film in about a decade. Oh, um, although I do but, agree, it's just harsh comment. Yeah, well, no, I, I, I mean, it's, it's no offense to him if he's listening, which he's not. Um, the, <laughs> but I, I just think someone needs to tell him, you know, you've you've still got it, yeah, you're just not giving it. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, like, this is why I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to this film now. It seems like a grounded world with Tim Burton elements like seeping in, and that, and, that, and, and that's yeah. what I want to see. I want to see like a normal world with Tim Burton, Tim Burton elements, right, rather than what he's been known for in the past, which is just everything's Tim Burton. I, I think it's a much more interesting thing where those things are interacting with like an everyday world. Absolutely. I mean, I think for me personally, the last great film that Tim Burton has done was Sweeney Todd. 
I, I enjoyed um, that film. But after that, you know, with you know, you can't really put it down to that being having source material because Charlie and the Chocolate Factory had source material, um, and look how that turned out. Uh, um, yeah, that, that, that film's okay. It's not. It's not. It's not dog poo. Let's be honest. But it's not his best, though, is it? I mean... <laughs> I mean, get rid of Johnny Depp, it would have been a bit better. Anyway. But, but anyway, um, I, I just feel like he, he kind of could be back on track to being one of the greatest filmmakers of our lifetime, um, which he he was, you know. Oh, we've also got another topic I need to put in. I'll put it in, in between this. I'll give it in. You, you, you'll see in a minute. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, like, I, exactly the same problem as you. I mean, I couldn't sum that film up in a sentence what it's about. No, absolutely not. I mean, Tim Burton meets a normal world. I mean that, but that's not a premise of a film. So, <laughs> sorry, but, two seconds. No, there's going to be no cuts in this. It's just going to be like half podcast saying no cuts. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Yeah? Sorry, I've, I found out some bad news today. Um, oh. It turns out that my landlord uh, won't let us have cats. Um, oh. And we've already bought cat litter and everything. And we just <laughs> He's going to come around and just think you're holding a cat hostage in the cupboard. <laughs> well, we had twins uh, that we already planned. Oh, congratulations. Cat. They were called Coco and Dodo. They were 10 years old. But now they're not going to be ours. Oh. I was really looking forward to that. Anyway, completely not film related, but that's why I had to look at my phone. That's really sad. <laughs> I'm heartbroken, mate. I'm heartbroken. We need a petition now. Send it to the Houses of Parliament. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's how hashtag, we yet. Hashtag free Coco and Dodo. <laughs> but, um, so our next topic is something Callum was very excited to think of. Can I? No, uh, I want to interject another topic that I thought of before we go to this. Is that okay? I thought I was about to segue to it. Yeah. Oh, oh. So, so, oh, so sorry for the strong <laughs> segue. So well, I mean, you know how I love my segues. So if it, by now, if you listen to this podcast, you probably know that me and Bradley are avid supporters and fans of a certain director called Christopher Nolan. Yes. And I and I now think Bradley knows where this is going. Please don't. What why is he cast <laughs> Harry Styles in a film? <laughs> I, <laughs> See, I, I don't know. I, I am worried, but I don't think he's the kind of director not to bring a name in it to bring people in. So oh, Absolutely, I'm... yeah. I mean like he, he cast this young unknown life. Who is it? Uh, I think Leo DiCaprio uh, <laughs> for Inception, <laughs> uh, but no, no, it's this. I, I trust Nolan enough that it has its reasons. I don't trust, <laughs> trust. I don't trust the prick that he's cast <laughs> enough. I mean, because... I mean, like what, one of the good things about his situation, of the few good things it could be, is that he's he. Uh, he screen tested for him and his wife, which is basically his producer on every film. So mm-hmm. they've um, so, so there's a screen test, which means there was a point to back out of it. So that's quite promising that they've had like a test, and it's not just being you are Harry Styles you're in the film. So that's a bit of a bonus that it's been like tested out before. Yeah, well, the, the Chris Nolan never actually, oh, at least by what I've read and seen. He um he never actually cast people just off you know oh, okay I, I feel like that'll be good I mean for Catwoman sorry Selena Kyle uh he yeah uh, he like he auditioned like eight of the most you know prolific actresses in Hollywood at the time um and he made them all audition again and again and again until he, he felt like he got the right one um but uh, this one I'm finding it hard. So it's Harry fucking Styles. <laughs> like, why Why would you cast Harry Styles in a World War II epic? I mean, let's face it, Northern is up there with the big names in Hollywood right now, with the Scorsese, with the Spielberg. If any of those had done it, I, I don't think I'd be able to see sense. So I'm not I'm not going to... See, the, the only thing that, that in the way it could work... Is that he seems to have a Band of Brothers feel to Dunkirk. I, I mean, there's quite an ensemble cast to it at the moment. Like, as in it'll be this group of, like, young lads going into Dunkirk, which is what it sounds like the, the basic premise is going to be. But, but and, and there'll be a twist on that because it's Nolan, for sure. Or there'll be a unique angle. But, like, I, I could see that, like, him being in there and not being fully relied on as, like, a lead guy, but just being there as part of a group. I, I can kind of see that. Like, can you not see that as, at best? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, if if they pull it off like a Saving Private Ryan, where like Vin Diesel had his first acting break there, and he was fantastic in it. it in fact, I'm, I'll probably say it's the best he's ever been as an actor, because he was in small doses scattered throughout. Before, I mean, you know, it's been out for like twenty years, but you know, spoiler alert, he got shot in the head. Um, <laughs> uh, actually, no, was it the chest? Either way, he got shot and died. Um, <laughs> so, but if, if he's like that kind of role, which I believe he will be, he'll he'll have lines. Obviously, you don't go and screen test just to look pretty. Well, that's Harry Styles. Well, well, that, I was about to know. say, that's the reason I got cast. Um, but, but no, I'd, I'd, if he's just a supporting character um, and the, the lead actors are, you know, big guns, then I don't see a problem. Okay, so. No, I do see a problem. If I can just, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I regret everything. So, it, Mo- so it's moving gonna, on from this happen. pain, it's it's going to happen. But to be honest, the fact that Chris Nolan World War Two epic's coming, of oh, it's it's not enough to put me off. Excuse I mean, like, but, but you're going to see it either way. Mini-set. You're not going to you're not going to go and protest. <laughs> oh no, I'm not going to go and protest. <laughs> but I mean, what's yeah. he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on because I want to. Um, more <laughs> casting news. Uh, some of uh, something that actually makes a little bit more sense. Uh, we have casting announcements, or well, not announcements, but updates for the final shortlist according to Deadline and Variety for the Han Solo or Han Solo um, origin story film anthology film. Uh, so the actors we have are well. In fact, there's there's I, a few there. You can probably research those. But what what names take your take your fancy? For me personally, it's Jack O'Connell. Well, can um, you read them all out, please, from the top? Because I want to see even out the second one. Oh, I fucking know you're doing that. That's why I'm. <laughs> that's why I was avoiding it. Okay, Taryn Edgerton. Okay, Hold from on. Kingsman. Uh, Alden Enron, <laughs> uh from Hail Caesar. Uh, Jack Rayner from Transformers: Age of Extinction. Uh, Blake Jenner, everybody wants some, and Jack O'Connell from Unbroken and Skins. If you're UK based, uh, but anyway, before you put me through hell, um, <laughs> my my uh, my pick would be Jack O'Connell um, because I I think he's still yet to show range, um, but he's he's definitely got a side to him that's. I say he hasn't showed range. He hasn't showed what actually made him famous in the UK. Because so far, the films that he's been in, like Unbroken and 71, he was very intense. His character went through a lot. And that's not Han Solo. Han Solo is kind of, you know, fearless, you know, big-headed. Everything that his characters so far haven't been. But he has he has played that character in Skins. Um, and I, I think he looks young enough to pull it off. Some of the others, I think, look slightly older. Um, and I don't know, I just think he's a solid actor with, with potential for the future um, my, my second choice would be Taron um, I, I think I think he's got the banter down he's got the charm um, and he, I think he can pull off a younger look um, but if, I, if it was down to me none of these would play young Han Solo because we wouldn't see a young Han Solo <laughs> on the big screens because not everything needs an origin story but yeah I, I would go see a younger Chewie. I would love for Chewie to be slightly smaller. That'd be brilliant. Anyway, so <laughs> um, <laughs> my pick for this, it's not going to be Jack O'Connell or Tyrant Edgerton. I don't, I don't really know who it is, but I think this is the kind of film where you need to cast an unknown. I mean, like mm-hmm. you just have to have that blank slate. And I mean, those three, I if you told me those three names before, um, if you told me Alden's, Jack's or Blake's name before, I literally wouldn't have probably knew who they were which might be bad, but I just wouldn't know who they were. And I, I'm, this is the film where I want an unknown to come through because I don't really want to be watching it going, this is how an Edgerton doing an impression of Han Solo. I kind of want it to just be like a fresh face that I haven't seen before. So I'm kind of hoping it's one of the more lesser known actors. And also it's more of an opportunity for them as like career wise. I mean, like Jack O'Connell and Tarrant are set for life in, in acting if they want to be there. But um, I mean, and also physically wise, I don't really like Jack O'Connell and Tarrant Edgerton are both quite bulky kind of slightly like i mean hand cider was more of a skinny frame so i don't really know if that'd yeah. be put on off i mean if, 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 there's so many complications with this film I mean, the cast are just one of them i mean like i i I mean, are they going to do an impression of, of Han Solo or are they going to try and make it their own but then if they make it their own it's not going to seem like Han Solo film i mean you've got all that i mean 
you you then got like the loss of tension in the film because you kind of know where it's all heading. I mean that. I mean I like, kind of want to segue like Better Call Saul is halfway through its season now, and every time a character that pops up, you know you lose all the tension because yeah. you know like the the result of that character. Mm-hmm. So it's just so many problems with this film. I I'm, I'm gonna watch it. I'm excited to see it. I just think the casting is just one of the first hurdles that this film's gonna have to try and make over to be a successful film. It just seems so many risks at so many points in the creation that I don't really know why. I agree. I mean, if it's down to me, I wouldn't I wouldn't make the film. But I mean, I'm, I'm not a multi. <laughs> I'm not working for a multi billion dollar company. So what do I know? I mean, like also like you got you got so many other characters you can make it. I mean, like. Rogue One's got like unknown characters without a st- w- with a plot line that goes in. I mean that's perfect because you're not doing an impression of anyone. I mean it's the same with um, a Boba Fett movie. I mean you don't really know who Boba Fett looks like because the prequels shouldn't really be canon. So let's just avoid <laughs> the <laughs> yeah. tiny bit of, of, of Boba Fett lore you see there. So I mean like there's so many other things. I mean yeah I don't really know. If, this film could be the first Star Wars film of the new age to not do that well. I mean, Rogue One's going to be fine. Episode Eight's probably going to be fine. But Han Solo film, I kind of think that's where it's a bit iffy. But I mean, w- one of the interesting things that Lord and Miller, who's directing this, has apparently had their eyes on Tarrant Edgerton from the beginning. And it's basically been right. having to go through the process. So I think Tarrant Edgerton is probably going to get it. But I, like I said, I would probably want an unknown to come into the role. Don't like it. <laughs> not happy uh, moving on uh, we're going on to a segment called what's in cinemas uh, where we talk a little bit about what's in the cinema um, preferably what we've seen but like I said I have been away so Callum no pressure uh, in cinemas that week, uh, this, that week uh, this week we have London Has Fallen Hail Caesar and Grimsby uh, now I've seen Grimsby um, I wasn't feeling 100% um, due to volumes of alcohol, um, but to be honest, it, it did. I did have some really laugh out loud moments in this film, but I couldn't tell you how one event led to another, and I, I can't tell you, you know, why I would recommend it other than its gross out factor, and for that reason, I'm not sure if I can send people to the cinemas to go pay and watch it. But I don't even think it's that gross. That I mean, like you've got that one scene which the film was basically. I think Grimsby sold on that one scene that everyone's talking about. And it just seems like that's in there just to be the talking point of the one scene that you can't speak about. Because that's because like that, like in a pitch meeting of, of that film to get financing, it must have been, oh, so, so, so this is the thing that's going to sell the film. Which if I said what it is, you would laugh because it's outrageous. But yeah. yeah. Um, well, I guess we're moving on from, from that then, if that's, well, if that's how you feel about well, it. Well, one more thing. I mean, like this film clocks in at 83 minutes overall. There's no room for it to breathe. Like it, it feels like a film that they had no confidence in, and they were like, "Okay, let's go to the next joke as quick as we can and not let it breathe," because there, there seems, it seems to be no confidence within the material there. It, it felt to me that they actually cut out, uh, cut out, uh, they cut a lot out of the film, um, which for a comedy is always a problem. Um, but I don't know. It's Sasha Brown Cohen's at his best when he's creating characters, and for me, I actually preferred the. Um, the interviews and the press going into this film because when he's in character he's such an intelligent guy and he's so witty um he can he can turn anything on its head and make it funny i, I just don't see how that didn't come across in the film but i mean like compared to it like if you look at all his past films they've all got like a, a message or backing behind it i mean like you've got kind of like bruno which is kind of like a european kind of like culture toward gays i mean you've got that kind of thing there and I mean, you got Borat with all the like um, international stereotypes. International stereotypes there, and and, and you got the dictator with the, with all the like the, or the dictator kind of like stereotypes all throughout the world. And then you've got some guy from Grimsby. It's just like I don't really see what's well. They, they, I mean, it's there's nothing at stake for the film, and there's no solid message behind it. It just seems to be a film to bridge another film to for Sasha Baron Cohen, and and uh, yeah, it's a mess. So that that said. If you replaced the lead character Nobby and turned it into an Ali G film and called it Ali G and Grimsby, right? And the same events took place, but it was Ali G. Would you be Would you be happier with the outcome? Yeah, because Ali G is funny. 
He's, he, <laughs> he's funny by himself. I mean, like, I never really laughed at what Nobby did. It was more just like that film as a whole. It's just like, I mean, like, the, the best things about this was the throwaway lines in between the jokes for me. It's just like the sly comments because he's so intelligent that the kind of like bridging between the jokes are actually r- more funny than the jokes themselves from the sly comments rather than the set pieces of fireworks in places where they shouldn't be. It's just... Yeah. For me, the, my favourite part of the film is actually seeing Rebel Wilson pull off an incredible accent. Like, <laughs> Oh my god, the, the, the accents in this film. Literally, where, where do we even start with this? I mean, I mean, where's Nobby from? Grimsby via Oxford? It's just like... <laughs> It's, it's so weird. Literally, like, he, he starts a sentence full on Northern, and then by the last word of that sentence, he's into his normal Sasha Baron Cohen voice. It's just, like, literally, that, that, that is how it goes. It just goes from, like, Northern down to his normal voice every single sentence, which is why it moves on so quick, because it's a paragraph of dialogue. It would just be normal Sasha Baron Cohen at the end of it. Which is why Mark Strong done the right thing and kept his own voice. Yeah, well, I... I, I Mark Strong was great just being like a normal character, kind of like a straight guy, and it's just like to, to play off the comedy from. So he he was fine there. I mean, he tried to do some first person stuff, which is fine until I saw the trailer for. Was it called Henry? Oh, Hardcore Henry. Hard, which sounds like a porn film. Hardcore Henry, but, but yeah. I was, well, originally I'm, it was called Hardcore, but they had to change the name, didn't they? <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, the, like, the action tries some stuff, but it's just, yeah. It's a throwaway movie, which is a shame because I think there's a lot of potential there. Wait, uh, wait, one more thing. This is the kind of this film in an ideal world would have replaced Adam Sandler's straight to Netflix film. I could have seen this being a great Netflix film to put on, but to be made straight for that, I would not have watched the ridiculous sex and cinemas. So no, it, it's what I mean. Like it, this film would have been perfect to release on just Netflix. <laughs> Oh, I mean, okay. it's literally no reason for it to go and see it in the cinema. It's not long. It's not great. It's just, it's the perfect Netflix film. But yeah. Uh, also out this week is London Has Fallen and Hail Caesar. Uh, I haven't seen London Has Fallen yet. Um, I do plan on doing so. Um, but I've, I've heard it again. Unfortunately, it, it's a bit of a throwaway film. Um, but let's face it, as long as it's kind of similar to the first one, who can really complain because the first one was pretty much a throwaway action flick. I mean, so I, I've seen London has fallen and I haven't seen hell's either. So I'll talk about London has fallen for a bit. Um, the, the, the first one was enjoyable because it's all set in one place. So the second one's set in London of, I'm a giant terrorist attack that literally plays up to all the stereotypes of a terrorism film that you would expect. Like big time, right. literally like, is it, then it's basically like a crowd of cops and some of them are bad. And let's just say if, you could guess who who they, who they were going to choose to be the bad guys. <laughs> without, 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 without so, <laughs> so it's basically all of that. But like the, the whole premise of this film was you get to see London be, like like going to bits. My problem with it is that that happens in the first third of the film. It's literally a montage of every single landmark in London blowing up, and then from then it just goes it just, it just goes downhill because like you're literally just going through like empty buildings just running away. So like I. After that first third of a film, and you've seen the spectacular of it, it's just like a generic running away from bad guys going to thing, and it's so so predictable, like on an unbelievable predictable level. I mean, there's not one twist in the whole thing, and also like the the first ten minutes of this film isn't even set in London, which says which says quite a lot about a film called London Has Fallen. Right. So it's just very <laughs> well, disappointing for me. I, I really I enjoyed the that... first one, but the the issue I have is that. It looks like... So the trailer for this... I actually really enjoyed the trailer for this. Okay, It felt like it was really kind of gritty, dark, but also it had a, a really, you know, campy, 90 action flick feel to it. Um, the issue I have is that when I'm speaking to people um, as they come out of the film and I'm talking to them about, oh, you know, what do you think? A lot of them would say that they didn't really feel anything. And for an action film, you've got one job. And that's to get the adrenaline, uh, adrenaline pumping. I mean, so did you feel that it was a bit flat, or was it just like there were no stakes? It was like just you like, said, there were no plot twists. The first third of this film is amazing, but it doesn't sustain it after the after the rest of the film. I mean, like in the trailer, you see everything blow up, kind of like Big Ben, all those kind of things go into well, all shattering right in front of you. But mm. after that happens at the end of the first like act, it's just nothing nothing to sustain it at all in any way and it's just it becomes a drag i'm just waiting for that film it's literally just him walking around 
empty London streets. And also, it's so... I mean, like, at the end, when the president has said that, like, hundreds and thousands of, of other cops have been killed, like, by like British cops, like, the headquarters suddenly starts cheering, like, yay, the president's alive, but thousands of our colleagues are dead. It's just, like, it, it's just, it's that kind of film. It's just... Right. I don't... Yeah. Watch the first third and then leave the cinema. That's what I, I will do. If you I will do that. Film. I will do that. <laughs> okay, going on to our final uh, topic of the day is uh, what's coming out this week. Um, actually, we're not doing that this week, are we? Um, no, we'll talk about that anyway quickly. We've got 10 Cloverfield Lane, The Boy, Risen, and Zootropolis. Uh, what are you most looking forward to? So Zootropolis only previews this weekend. It comes out the week after. But um, I, I'm looking forward to, to seeing it. Well, Zootropolis again, maybe, but also 10 Cloverfield Lane. I mean, we're in this very awkward thing in the UK at the moment where we're getting films three weeks or four weeks after the US. I mean, The Boy was released a month ago in the US. 10 Cloverfield Lane was released two weeks ago. Um, Zootropolis two weeks ago. But yeah, so um, The Boy looks like a generic horror film. I'm, I'm, I'm in for that if I've got nothing else to do on a Friday night. I'll go and see that. It, I, it seems to be average. But, but 10 Cloverfield Lane it seems to have great buzz around it. It was made as a film... Apparently, we saw apparently it was made as an indie film, and then Cloverfield was attached to it in reshoots. And I think it's really like it's it's done well out of that because it hasn't had to live up to being Cloverfield when it was made. That kind of makes sense. So it was yeah. kind of made as its own entity, and it's worked massively well for it. But I mean, Zoo Dropis, I saw this at a preview at the weekend, and this film blew me away in a way I wasn't expecting. I mean, I mean, Disney have really been on top form recently after one release after another. It's, it, again, it's the world that I want to explore. I really buy into it. I mean, all the voices are so well cast. And it was only at the end when I was reading the credits that I was reading the names. I mean, like Idris Elba was one of the main guys. It's just so many famous people who, like like fit so well in it. It's such a great world to explore. Kind of like Sausage Party. Like, you, you want to know more <laughs> about all these little side characters around. So right. I'd really recommend Zootropolis to go and see previews this weekend. Or 10 Cloverfield Lane, which I heard is good. But I can't say that for sure. But I think it, you... I think you'll be fine. So, I mean, the great thing about 10 Cloverfield Lane is that if you even took the Cloverfield name out of it, it looks like such an incredible drama. And it's I'm so happy that John Goodman's got, you know, so much screen time because that guy deserves as much screen time as, you know, is thrown his way because he is such a powerful force in cinema. Um, so I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how that tension unfolds. But the fact that, like you said, Cloverfield is kind of almost like an added bonus. Um so I'm, I'm looking forward to that one uh, and the one that you mentioned, uh, Zootropolis, is it called? Yeah, uh, I've, I've heard nothing, in the US. I've, I've heard nothing but great things about this film. Also, that's really off. Like, So basically, it's called Zootropolis over here, Zootopia in America, and it's got another name in Germany. But every time they mention it, it just sounds like someone's copying and pasting another clip because obviously we didn't repeat it all the time. So it's just like Zootropolis, Zootopia, like you're going to hear <laughs> like when they oh, pushed right. it <laughs> or, 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 it, it just stands so out of place but apart from that I absolutely loved it, it, it and also again there's so much humour in this for adults it's ridiculous I mean like it, 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 it it's not like Toy, it's not on Toy Story's level but it, it's, it's got that underlying adult humour in there for, people, right. for for like parents to enjoy and it's not patronising which is great for a kids film these days I mean so many kids films seem to be talking down to their audiences this gives you so much content there like just take what you want from it and you'll Got it. Good. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to catching that one when I can, because uh, I'm going to try and watch as many of these films, you know, that we've mentioned before the whole Batman v Superman comes out. Because let's face it, I'm seeing that more than once, even if it's a pile of dog shit. <laughs> so I can't wait for that one. Uh, so as always, we're going to leave you with something that we recommend. Callum, what do you recommend for the guys or girls, but mostly guys watching? So this is something slightly different. It's a film series, kind of. So I, I'm only, I've got it here next to me. So um, Sonic right. Highways, it's a great documentary about music. I mean, it's, it's got it's basically about three photos. I mean, every, everything's an hour. Every episode, and it goes through, like, the history of, like, each kind of, like, location. So so you've got Austin, you've got Washington, you've got all those cities. If you're a music fan, you absolutely love it. And, and, it's, and it's very cinematic. Bear in mind, it was an HBO series. But again, HBO have Game of Thrones, so they're, so they're used to creating that kind of content. So yeah. that's something different. I mean, there's about eight hours worth of footage, like I think eight, eight episodes. So yeah, go and see that. If if you fancy something different rather than a film, it's more a film series. 
Uh, well, if you're going to do like a little mini series, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to recommend The Take. Uh, so this is something that was out a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago now, actually. Uh, it stars Tom Hardy, um, and he plays a gangster. And I'm not going to tell you anything else, because this is before Tom Hardy was Tom Hardy. And he shows so much, like, he's just so incredible in this film. Like, he's so into this character that if I'd shown you this clip compared to the Tom Hardy and the Revenant, for example, that you wouldn't think these are the same person. That's the, I think this is when people started clocking on to Tom Hardy. Um, but it's a four-part series, um, so it doesn't take as much of your life away as what your uh, suggestion does, but it's not a competition. <laughs> uh, but no, if, if you can, uh, check that out. Have you had a chance to see that at all? No, I haven't even heard of it, so I'll, I'll probably go check right. it out, because I mean, everyone's on the Tom Hardy hype for the past few years. So. Exactly. So if, if you're a fan of what Tom Hardy's doing now, watch what he was doing before Tom Hardy was a big name. And, and a fun Apart fact, from Star Trek, let's not go back to the, where he plays the bold Star Trek villain. No, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> going on about. Not that um, back. <laughs> but his, uh, his wife's in this film as well. So a little, little fun fact for you. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it from us for this week or this, you know, period of time. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> next, no, next week we'll, uh, we'll have an extra guest on. I mean, the week uh, after Batman the Superman spoiler cast, I reckon. Absolutely. I just burped all so excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, um, but you can find me on Twitter and anywhere else at Bradley underscore J underscore Evans. Um, and you can find me at Seymour and <laughs> C-M-O-O-R-I-N. And remember to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, um, search our name, write it in the sky with no sky planes if you want. I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, that would be incredible. let us know if you're doing that because you know <laughs> we'd hate to miss that <laughs> but yeah so um thank you no thank you no thank you and thank you for listening and thank you for being here thank you for having me <laughs> <laughs> thank you for making this a very awkward outro all no, right that's that's all right good night God bye bless. <laughs> well i'm dying for a piss i was swinging for the last 10 minutes